Uh, I welcome you all here tonight to a respectful, democratic dialogue about various Jewish perspectives on the global beat boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, and whether it facilitates or hinders the movement to end the occupation, to ensure that Israel abides by international human, humanitarian law, human rights law and precepts, and to meet its obligations to recognize the Palestinian people's right to self-determination. We hope this panel will further respectful discussions of critical issues facing the Palestine and Israel communities, discussions that are too often silenced within parts of our community, and that they help create a safe and public space to listen to each other and to learn from each other. With that goal in mind, I introduce you to Adam Horowitz. Adam, can you raise your hand? <laughs> who will moderate and facilitate the panel discussion, as well as the audience question period following the panel's presentation. Adam will ensure that respect and civility are the watchwords of the evening so that we can all listen, learn, and share from each other. A little about Adam, for those of you who don't know Adam. Um, he's a writer and co-editor of Manda Weiss, a news website devoted to covering American foreign policy in the Middle East chiefly from a progressive Jewish perspective. Adam received his master's degree at, in Near Eastern Studies from New York University. He's a board member of Jews for Racial and Economic Justice. He served as the director of the Israel-Palestine program for uh, American Friends Studies <coughs> Committee. And in addition to Manda Weiss, Adam also writes for The Nation, The Huffington Post, Middle East Reports, Z Magazine, Talking Points, Memo, and TheHill.com. Um, just before Adam begins, I really want to thank Gethsemane Church for hosting this event tonight. We approached several synagogues and some ch other churches, and Gethsemane stepped forward and was happy to host us tonight, and even gave us a reduced rental price. And on that note, I'd like to say that we have a basket in the back, and we're going to pass it around a little later on, because Gethsemane is a pretty poor church, and we'd like, to you, we'd like for you to make a donation if you possibly can. Um, so, with that in mind, I'm going to give you to Adam to introduce our fabulous and wonderful panelists that we have here tonight. Great. Uh, thank you, Carol, and welcome to everyone. I'm really excited to be here. And I was just going to start off with a few remarks before we get into the meat of the evening. Um, but tonight we're here to talk about boycott, divestment, and sanctions, or BDS. Um, for people who don't know or aren't familiar, the BDS movement started in 2005 when a statement was issued that was endorsed by over 170 Palestinian civil society organizations that called for boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel until three conditions were met. Those three conditions were ending the occupation and dismantling the wall, recognizing equal rights for Palestinian citizens of Israel, and respecting, protecting, and promoting the Palestinian right of return. In the last two years especially, the topic of BDS has become especially heated and controversial in the Jewish community here in the US. Just two weeks ago, the Jewish Federations of North America and the Jewish Council for Public Affairs, two of the umbrella organizations in the community, announced the creation of a new program called the Israel Action Network, which is a three-year, $6 million project to, and this is in their words, protect Israel against a campaign that seeks to isolate the Jewish state in the international arena and which uses boycott, divestment, and sanctions as its principal tool. Just this past week, down in New Orleans, where the Jewish Federation was uh, having their annual General Assembly, Israeli Prime Minister, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu lauded this program, saying, the best way to counter lies is with the truth. That is why I commend your decision to establish the Israel Action Network and dedicate resources to battle, to fight this battle for truth. We must fight these lies and slanders together to ensure that truth prevails. 
But as many of you probably know, that speech that Prime Minister Netanyahu gave was interrupted five times by Jewish activists who were putting forth an argument that it's Israel's own policies that are leading to this isolation, not the work of the BDS movement. So if nothing else, this action showed that there's actually a diversity of opinion about Israel and about BDS in the Jewish community, and unfortunately there haven't been the venues to discuss it. So I think tonight one of the things we're trying to do is model what that discussion could look like in the Jewish community. We're going to hear from four different, quite distinguished speakers sharing their perspectives on BDS. Um, there are some things all of our speakers agree on, primarily the need to find a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and there's a lot of things that our speakers don't agree on, um, how to get to that solution. Um, <coughs> After we hear from the speakers, uh, we'll have a little bit of a question and answer between ourselves, and then we'll have a chance for questions and answers from the audience. This was already said, and I'm going to say it again, and we'll probably say it again, but I just ask that you please be respectful of our speakers and each other. I can guarantee you that you will hear things tonight that you disagree with. Hopefully, though, you will also hear things that inform your opinion or maybe change your opinion. And the only way that we'll be able to have this discussion is if, if we're all respectful of one another. So I, I'm sure I'll come back to this, especially if things get a little heated, but just wanted to say that up front. <laughs> 